In this video, I'm going to talk about my experience with selective mutism and the diagnosis that turned out to be the cause of that in my case. So, selective mutism is a psychological disorder and like most diagnoses related to literally anything that neurodivergent people experience, I don't like it. I don't think it's accurate or helpful. There absolutely are people who experience selective mutism because of psychological causes, but I don't think that is the main cause, especially in autistic people. I think the main cause of selective mutism in autistic people is a variety of conditions affecting the ear particularly the vestibular system. Now, I was diagnosed a few years ago with superior canal dehiscence syndrome. I talk about this a lot. Most people have never heard of this. It's not well known, even by ENTs. And what medicine knows about it, knows about it, is mostly wrong, because you can't know something that isn't true, right? So, in Superior canal dehiscence syndrome means that there is a hole in the skull between where the ear processes sound and balance so that sound waves are interpreted as the body moving. There are similar conditions, including, I think it's called facial cochlear dehiscence, but it's just the same thing in a different place. There's a hole in the skull, in the ear, that causes problems. Medicine thinks that superior canal dehiscence syndrome is like an inborn, inherent deformity, and it's not. When you're born, your skull isn't even finished cooking yet. Like, your whole skeletor isn't finished cooking when you're born. You're supposed to be squishy because, as it turns out, birth canals aren't particularly big, and it helps to be squishy. So, what happens is that when your body gradually, eventually, gets around to putting all of those minerals back into your skeletor, it doesn't do it all the way. The bone in that part of the ear is some of the thinnest and most delicate bone in the entire human body. So if you have any problem whatsoever with bone density, well, whoopsie daisy, you're probably going to have superior canal dehiscence syndrome or something similar. It is well documented that autistic people, as well as people with bipolar and OCD, and probably even more diagnoses, are connected to changes in calcium processing that effectively worsen the consequences of long-term mineral deficiencies. In the late 80s, the U.S. decided to add, like, utterly absurd amounts of calcium to fortified foods. And shortly thereafter, the rates of prevalence of autism skyrocketed because the main problem in autism is minerals. You cannot process calcium without magnesium. You can't even keep calcium dissolved in your bloodstream without magnesium. So the more calcium you consume, the more your body has to break down bone to get the magnesium that it needs to process all the calcium that you consume. Not only is the bone in the ear incredibly thin to begin with, but the ear itself is incredibly prone to inflammation for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that you're like, you know how you have a hole in your ear and like the out the outside world gets in, the air goes in your ear and there's like allergens and stuff going in your ear and the hole in your ear. Yeah, that's that's what I call inflammation, baby. There's stuff like the the changes in humidity, the changes in temperature, and all the allergens in the world, like, go in your ear. And when you have allergies, your ears get clogged, because, like, your ears and your nose and your tonsils and all this shit, like, they're connected, it turns out. Who could have guessed? So, again, you have a lot of inflammation in your ear. That's just the reality of ears. That's what ears do. Like, I breathe through my ears. If I have my ears covered, I can't breathe. There's a lot of outside coming into the ear. 
And again, because neurodivergent people have these mutations to calcium processing, that essentially renders inflammation much more harmful. Like, the purpose of inflammation originally is to heal. It's the body allocating more resources to tissue that's been damaged so it can heal it. But when you have these long-term mineral deficiencies, that makes inflammation more harmful. So the combination of these innate changes to calcium processing that make people neurodivergent in the first place and the fact that ears are just subjected to a lot of inflammation autistic people have bone broken down in their ears faster than it's normal and that can cause a wide range of hearing related symptoms including both hearing deficiencies being hard of hearing and hyperacusis or overstimulation as a result of auditory signaling here's how Conditions like superior canal dehiscence syndrome actually cause an inability to speak. So, as I've stated, the sound waves enter the wrong part of the ear and they're interpreted as the body moving instead of as sound. I don't know if you've ever gone skydiving or if you've ever like been on a roller coaster, but when your brain thinks your body is falling, or flipping around really fast it doesn't like that like it sends your body into a trauma response and the fact that you're not actually falling or flipping around kind of doesn't matter you know like if somebody throws you out of a plane you're going to go into a physiological trauma response that's just like reality that's not pathology so the pathology here is the deformity in the skull caused by long-term mineral deficiencies. The deformity is not the body sending itself into a trauma response when it's subjected to too much sound, because it should do that. If it were true that your body were being moved around in space the way that your faulty vestibular system is telling you you're moving you should go into a trauma response like that's not good for you you're not supposed to jump out of a plane i don't know if you've ever thought about this the human body was not meant to jump out of a plane it's a bad idea and your body doesn't like it like it's not really hard to see why <laughs> but because Again, like medicine has literally never seen a person who wasn't magnesium deficient because medicine doesn't understand how much magnesium you need. So medicine doesn't get that at every moment it's looking at bodies that are magnesium deficient. So it can't recognize the things that are caused by magnesium deficiency because we effectively have no control group. Like, as far as I can tell, I'm the only person on the planet who's getting enough magnesium. <laughs> Just because medicine literally hasn't studied magnesium as much as it studied calcium. And so it has an overinflated estimation of how important calcium is compared to magnesium. It's not hard to see why. Like, the entirety of the dairy industry's advertising strategy is to focus on the nutritional benefits of calcium. And it's true that if you're not getting enough calcium, that your bone density will suffer. But the problem is that getting more than enough calcium is actually worse than not getting enough calcium. Again, because you can't process calcium without enough magnesium, and magnesium is actually involved in so many more essential processes of metabolism that like magnesium deficiency is just so much worse for you than calcium deficiency. So it is technically true that with less than enough calcium, you'll suffer. But what nobody mentions when they talk about that is that getting more than enough calcium is worse than not getting enough calcium. Because again, like I just want to make this really clear, as important as calcium is, magnesium is more important. It is involved in way more bodily processes than calcium is, and you cannot process calcium without magnesium. To the point where, like, 
it's so much worse to eat a diet that's high in calcium and low in all other minerals than it is to just be deficient in all your minerals. Because if you're deficient in all of your minerals, then when bone gets broken down for its minerals, you just use them and it's fine. Like that's what bone's for. But when you're deficient in one mineral out of all of them, that means that when bone gets broken down to get the mineral that you lack, every other mineral just gets dumped in soft tissue. This is the main cause of disease in humans, period. Out of all of the things that can affect the human body in a negative way, the majority of them are caused by long-term mineral deficiencies, but not in all of them, so that a bunch gets dumped in soft tissue. It's not good when you have minerals dumped in soft tissue. That causes disease. That causes diabetes, that causes heart disease, that causes dementia, that causes fibromyalgia, that causes gastroparesis, that causes blood pressure problems, that causes mental illness, that ca causes everything. Like again, it is the number one cause of disease in the human body, period. Any long-term mineral deficiency will just wreck both your bones and your soft tissue. Because again, if you lack any mineral in your diet, your body will break down bone to get what it lacks and it will dump the rest in soft tissue. Bone is just fascia that's fully mineralized. Hard and soft tissue are not categorically different in the way that we think of them. Bone evolved to store minerals and nothing else. That's what it's for. The body isn't doing something wrong when it takes minerals out of bone when it needs them. That's what bone is for. There are so many different studies and articles talking about the connection between autism, bipolar, OCD, and potentially more to genetic mutations affecting calcium processing. And so again, that is why cases of autism skyrocketed in the early 90s, because we added calcium to fortified foods in the US in the late 80s. I'm not 100% certain on the timeline of adding calcium to fortified foods in the UK, but I would imagine that it was around the same time because medical science between the US and the UK obviously affects each other, even if we have separate medical systems. So the point of this video is to explain that there's a concrete medical cause for a lot of auditory processing issues in autism that most doctors unfortunately simply aren't aware of yet and that these issues have their root in the fact that neurodivergent people process minerals differently but unfortunately medicine hasn't studied this quite enough to really fully understand it it is essential to consume vital nutrients in terms of minerals in the proper proportion to each other it's like you know how a lot of people will talk about how the difference between cooking and baking is that in cooking you can like be a lot more creative with the the ratio of macronutrients you know it's like baking is about chemistry you have to follow the recipe in baking or it's not going to work out like there's no room for error in baking in a way that there is in cooking that's how most people will talk about the difference between cooking and baking and i just want to impress upon you that your bones are a delicate cake that you bake day in and day out and you have to have the right ingredients in the right proportion to each other to bake the bone cake the right way so much suffering in both the neurotypical and neurodivergent people is caused by the mineral imbalances and deficiencies that fortified foods create in people's bodies because they are fortified based on an incomplete understanding of minerals and dietary needs. 
Medicine doesn't study this stuff because it just doesn't care about autistic people and their auditory processing issues. That doesn't mean that the answers aren't out there. That doesn't mean that you can't get better. I used to be unable to speak most of the time. And look at me now. I don't plan any of this. I just sit here and say it all off the top of my head because I can. But five years ago, that would have been unthinkable. You can see the videos on my channel from five years ago. I don't talk in them because I couldn't talk out loud. I couldn't remember anything about my life when I was talking out loud. But there was a reason, a concrete reason. And when I understood that, my whole life changed. Even if this isn't the specific cause of your selective mutism, I want you to believe that there is a concrete medical cause and that if you work hard enough, you can find out what it is and you can reverse it so that you can have your life back. All I want is for you to have your life back. And I believe that you can.